Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's topic is, when does the day begin? When does the day begin? There is a lot of debate among the children of Israel regarding when a day begins. Before we can answer the question, when does a day begin, we must first define the word day. The Oxford Learner's Dictionary has four separate definitions of the word day. However, the most common definition is a period of 24 hours. The question then becomes, who decided that a day is 24 hours? On www.reference.com, there's an article entitled, Who Invented the 24-Hour Day? It states the following. The Greek astronomer Hipparchus was the first to propose a day divided into 24 equal hours. Hipparchus standardized the system from the Egyptians, who also divided the day into 24 hours but did not use a standard length for each hour. Hipparchus' system is also known as equinoctial time because it was based on 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime on the equinoxes. Many cultures continued to use hours of varying length, but hours became more standardized in the medieval period due to the use of mechanical clocks. In 1884, the universal day of 24 hours was proposed and accepted at the International Meridian Conference, which also began to standardize time zones. As we can see, the idea of a day being a period of 24 hours originated with the Egyptians, was stolen by the Greeks, and forced upon the rest of the world as recently as the year 1884. This concept is nowhere to be found in the Hebrew scriptures, which Christians insist on calling the Old Testament. Furthermore, we have just learned that it was the Greeks who divided the day into 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime. The idea of the 12-hour day was adopted by the Romans and heavily promoted to the point that no one bothers to question it nowadays. Again, the concept of a 12-hour day is nowhere to be found in the Hebrew Scriptures. The Most High did not instruct anyone to observe a 24-hour day or a 12-hour day. However, the 12-hour day is clearly stated in the fairy tale book called the New Testament. The words were put into the mouth of the false god and idol Jesus Christ that was created by the Romans to lead the children of Israel into idolatry. Let's read John chapter 11 verse 9 in the King James Version of the Christian Bible. That's John chapter 11 verse 9. It reads thus, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. As we can see, the definition of a day as a period of 24 hours, or even as a period of 12 hours, has nothing to do with the Hebrew Scriptures or Old Testament. We will soon examine the Most High's definition of the word day, but first, let us learn about when the rest of the world claims that a day begins. On www.aish.com, that's www.aish.com, under the heading Jewish Time and the subheading The Days, it says this. 
the Jewish day does not begin and end at midnight as does the secular calendar day. Midnight is not a distinguishable astronomic event. That means you cannot go outside, look in the sky, and tell that it's midnight. It continues. In the era before the modern clock, a specific hour of the night could not be precisely known, whereas an hour of the day was easily determined by sighting the location of the sun. Thus, the day had to begin by precise, simple, and universally recognized standards. So there had to be a way where anybody could go outside, look in the sky, and say, yes, the day has begun. The article continues, this meant that the day had to be reckoned either from the beginning of the night or the beginning of the day. I'll read that last sentence again. This meant that the day had to be reckoned or decided either from the beginning of the night or the beginning of the day. Common sense dictates that the day begins at the beginning of the day. The night begins at the beginning of the night. That's common sense. Now let's read quote two from www.aish.com to discover whether the Jewish people apply common sense to when the Jewish day begins. Quote number two says this, In Jewish time, the day begins at the onset, that means the beginning of night, the appearance of the stars, followed by the morning, which technically begins with the appearance of the north star. So notice, in Jewish time, and only in Jewish Time, the day begins at the beginning of the night. There is nowhere in the Hebrew scriptures that states that the day begins at night with the appearance of the stars. This is why it is called a Jewish day. It is unique to the Jewish people and has absolutely nothing to do with the true children of Israel. For those who wish there were Jews, you are welcome to begin your day at the beginning of the night. However, the rest of us will begin the day at the beginning of the day. We have just seen evidence that the Jewish day begins at the beginning of the night which makes no sense. And it is common knowledge that the secular day begins at midnight. That also makes no sense. Now, let's examine the definition of a day according to the Hebrew scriptures. Only when the scriptural definition of a day has been clearly established can we seek to answer the question, when does the day begin according to the Hebrew scriptures? Genesis chapter 1, I will be reading verses 1 to 5 and verses 14 to 18. That's Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and verses 14 to 18. I will be reading from the Brenton Septuagint translation. Verse 1. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. But the earth was unsightly and unfurnished, and darkness was over the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the water. Verse 3. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided between the light and the darkness. 
verse 5, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. It is very important to note that the day, which is the light, was divided or separated from the night, which is the darkness. God divided or separated the light, which is the day, from the darkness, which he called night. Verse 14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth to divide between day and night. It's very important that we understand that there is a clear division between day and night. It continues, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years. Verse 15, and let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven, so as to shine upon the earth. And it was so. Verse 16, and God made the two great lights. The greater light for regulating the day, that's the sun, and the lesser light for regulating the night, that's the moon the stars also. Now, what does it mean for regulating the day and regulating the night? In the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word regulate is defined as follows. To bring order, method, or uniformity to. Another definition is to fix or adjust the time, amount, degree, or rate of. So the sun regulates the day. It lets us know the time of the day. It allows us to know if it's morning, noon, or if it's approaching evening. Similarly, the moon enables us to know the time of the month. For example, the new moon indicates the start of a new month. Verse 17 says, And God placed them in the firmament of the heaven, so as to shine upon the earth, verse 18, and to regulate day and night, and to divide, divide, divide between the light that is the day, and the darkness, that is the night. And God saw that it was good. Remember, God divided between the light, which is the day, and the darkness, which is the night, and God saw that that was good. The Hebrew scriptures plainly state that day is the period of light that is regulated by the sun. That's the definition of day according to the Hebrew scriptures. It's the period of light that is regulated by the sun. On the other hand, night is the period of darkness that is regulated by the moon and the stars. Let us turn to Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 35 to 36. In the Brenton Septuagint translation, it's Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 35 to 36, and you'll find that in chapter 31 in the KJV. Chapter 38 in the Septuagint is chapter 31 in the KJV. Verse 35 reads thus, Thus says the Lord, who gives the Son... For a light by day, which means he gave the sun to regulate the day, to tell us what time of day it is. The moon and the stars for a light by night and makes a roaring in the sea, so that the wave the of roar, the Lord Almighty is his name. Verse 36, if these ordinances cease from before me, says the Lord, then shall the family of Israel cease to be a nation before me forever. 
in order to understand what this is saying, we need to get the definition of the word ordinance. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines the word ordinance as a rule established by authority or a permanent rule of action. So the rule that has been established in this passage is that the sun indicates that it's day. In other words, what time of day it is. The sun regulates the day. The moon and stars tell us it's night. They regulate the night. That's the rule established by the authority of the Most High God. And it says a permanent rule of action, which means it must not change. The sun must always indicate to us that it is day, and the moon and stars must always indicate to us that it is night. These verses are showing us that if the sun stops telling us that it is day and the moon and stars stop telling us when it is night, the Israelites would stop being a nation before the Most High forever. I'm going to read those verses again. Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 35 to 36 reads thus. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for a light by day, the moon and the stars for a light by night, and makes a roaring in the sea, so that the wave thee of roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Verse 36. If these ordinances, meaning if this permanent rule that was established by the Most High God, cease from before me, saith the Lord, then shall the family of Israel cease to be a nation before me forever. This is the real reason that the Jewish day begins with the appearance of the stars at night. It is intentionally done to confuse the true children of Israel. It makes absolutely no sense for the day to begin in the night because the Most High separated the day from the night and his ordinance, his rule that he has established permanently is that the sun indicates the day and the moon and stars indicate the night. The Jewish people know that if the sun stops telling us when it is day, the real children of Israel would be destroyed forever. The Jewish people knew that when the true children of Israel woke up, many of them would begin to look at Jewish customs as an example of what they should be doing. That way, the true Israelites would end up observing the Jewish day, which starts at night, instead of the Most High's day, which he revealed in the Hebrew Scriptures. Yet again, the children of Israel have been deceived. Let's consider a scripture where the clear division of day and night is explicitly demonstrated. Numbers chapter 11 verse 32. Numbers chapter 11 verse 32 reads thus. And the people rose up all the day and all the night and all the next day and gathered quails. He that gathered least gathered ten measures, and they refreshed themselves round about the camp. Here we see the pattern of day, night, day, and that continues. Night, day, night, day, night, day. We see that the day is separate from the night and does not include the night. What about those instances when the scriptures state days without mentioning nights? Are those 24-hour days? 
at the beginning of this teaching, I said that the Oxford Learner's Dictionary has four separate definitions of the word day. Depending on the context of each passage, the definition might be different. However, when referring to the days of the week, the biblical definition is always the period of light which the Most High called day. It is expected that the reader of Scripture will understand that each day or period of light is followed by a night or period of darkness. For this reason, it does not always explicitly state days and nights. Sometimes it simply says days. None of this suggests a 24-hour day. We can either count the days, which are periods of light, or both days and nights, periods of light and periods of darkness. The days are more significant markers of time because that is when we worked, conducted business, traveled, and did everything else of relative importance. Consider these examples in Genesis chapter 7. I will read Genesis chapter 7, verse 4, verse 10, verse 12, and verse 24. That's Genesis chapter 7, verses 4, 10, 12, and 24. Verse 4 reads thus, For yet seven days having passed, I bring rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out every offspring which I have made from the face of all the earth. So notice, when he spoke of seven days, it did not mention night. Whether it says nights or not, the context tells us that every day is followed by a night and we are counting those days, or in the case of 40 days and 40 nights, we can count the days and the nights. Verse 10, And it came to pass after the seven days that the water of the flood came upon the earth. Again, common sense tells us that after the seven days means day one, night one, Day two, night two. Day three, night three, and so forth. Verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So sometimes we are told explicitly days and nights. Other times we are simply told days. But we are supposed to understand that every day is followed by a night. If we are referring to days of the week. Verse 24, and the water was raised over the earth an hundred and fifty days. Now, no one in their right mind is going to think that the water disappeared every night. No, every one of those 150 days, water was on the earth. And the water continued to be on the earth in the nights which followed each of those 150 days. Now that we know the definition of day, According to the Hebrew scriptures, which is the period of light, which the Most High called day, and that's separate from the night, it is easier to identify when the day begins according to the Hebrew scriptures. There are many scriptures which clearly demonstrate that the day begins in the morning. In this teaching, I will examine just a few. Of those scriptures. First Kings chapter 19 in the Brenton Septuagint is first Samuel chapter 19 in the KJV. That first Kings chapter 19 in the Septuagint, first Samuel 19 in the KJV, and I will be reading verses 9 to 12. Verse 9 reads thus And an evil spirit from God was upon Saul. And he was resting in his house, and a spear was in his hand. And David was playing on the harp with his hands. Verse 10. And Saul sought to smite David with the spear, and David withdrew suddenly from the presence of Saul. And he drove the spear into the wall, and David retreated and escaped. We see here that Saul was trying to kill David. Verse 11. And it came to pass in that night that Saul sent messengers to the house of David to watch him in order to slay him in the morning. 
So that same night, Saul sent messengers to David's house to keep an eye on him so that first thing in the morning they could kill David. It continues, And Melchol David's wife told him, saying, Unless thou save thy life this night, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. Now, he was going to be slain in the morning. And she's telling him in the night that tomorrow, which is in the morning, that's another day, he would be slain unless he saved himself that night. Verse 12, so Melchol lets David down by the window and he departed and fled and escaped. So if I say to you tonight that tomorrow, which is in the morning, you're going to be killed if you don't escape tonight, then we understand that tomorrow is another day. But let us go to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and look for the definition of tomorrow to see if it really means that it's another day. The definition of tomorrow in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is this. The day after today. The day after today. So that's another day. It's not the same day. The day began in the morning. Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 26, and verse 31. Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 26, and verse 31. And he rose up in that night, and took his two wives, and his two servant maids, and his eleven children, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok, verse 23. And he took them, and passed over the torrent, and brought over all his possessions. So this is talking about our forefather Jacob. This is what he did that night. Verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till the morning. So we see this man is wrestling, fighting with Jacob all night till the morning. Verse 25, and he saw that he prevailed not against him, and he touched the broad part of his thigh, and the broad part of Jacob's thigh was benumbed in his wrestling with him. Verse 26, and he said to him, let me go, for the day has dawned. But he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. This is the famous passage of Jacob wrestling with God. They wrestled all night till the morning. In the morning, God said, the day has dawned. What is the meaning of the word dawned? Let's turn to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary to find some synonyms of the word dawn. A synonym is a word that could be used in place of another word because they have the same meaning. The synonyms of the word dawn are begin, commence, and start. So we see that in Genesis chapter 32, in the morning, the Most High God said, the day has dawned. In other words, the day has begun. The day has commenced. The day has started. So the Most High God himself just said that the day begins in the morning. At this point, someone will ask the question, how can we know at which point in the morning the day has begun? Let's read verse 31 for the answer to this question. Genesis chapter 32, verse 31. It reads, And the sun rose upon him when he passed the face of God, and he halted upon his thigh. So the sun rose after the Most High said that the day had begun. This indicates that the day begins in the morning before the sun rises. In fact, the day begins at the first appearance of light in the morning. The position of the sun simply tells us what part of the day we are in, whether that be morning, 
noon, which is the middle of the day, or evening. We need to remember that there was light before the sun was created. It is this light which was created when the Most High said, Let there be light. That light is what lets us know that a new day has begun. The sun was created on day four as the heavenly sign that enables us to measure time during the day. That is how the sun regulates the day. The sun makes the day brighter and warmer. But Genesis chapter 1 makes it clear that there is a light that exists without the sun. It is this light that the Most High called day. Now that we know that a new day starts at first light, the question remains, why does Genesis 1 repeatedly say evening and morning instead of morning and evening? Genesis chapter 1, I will read verses 5, 8, 13, 19, 23, and 31. That's Genesis chapter 1, verses 5, 8, 13, 19, 23, and 31. Verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. We see here that the first day was made up of evening and morning. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. We see that the second day was made up of evening and morning. Verse 13. And there was evening and and there was morning the third day. We see that the third day was made up of evening and morning. Verse 19. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. We see that the fourth day was made up of evening and morning. Verse 23, and there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. The fifth day was made up of evening and morning. And verse 31, and God saw all the things that he had made and behold, they were very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. We see that the sixth day was made up of evening and morning. These verses are simply telling us what the day is made up of. The day, which is the period of light that is separated from the darkness or the night, is made up of evening and morning. What is the definition of the words evening and morning? The Collins Dictionary defines the word evening as the last part of the day. The word morning is defined as the first part of the day. So the day is made up of the last part of the day and the first part of the day, but certainly not in that order. In Genesis chapter 1, we see that a day consists of evening plus morning. In other words, when we add an evening and a morning, we get a day. Just the same, when we add a morning and an evening, we still get a day. Genesis chapter 1 is not telling us the order in which the parts of a day should come. 
It is simply telling us what a day is made up of because this is a time in which the Most High worked. He did not work at night. Let's consider a mathematical comparison to make this clearer. 2 plus 1 equals 3. This means that 3 is made up of 2 and 1. However, 1 plus 2 is also equal to 3. The order of the numbers does not matter. What matters is what 3 is made up of. In the same way, evening plus morning equals day. But morning plus evening also equals day. Genesis 1 is simply telling us what a day is made up of, not the order in which they must come. Consider this. When the Most High said, let there be light, and proceeded to work, that was the start of the first day. The start of the day is also known as the first part of the day. In other words, the morning. The Most High started his work on the morning of every day of creation, and he continued until the evening as an example to man. Just like he rested on the seventh day as an example to man. Psalm 104 verse 23 reads thus, Man shall go forth to his work and to his labor till evening. So man is supposed to work from morning, which is the first part of the day, till evening, which is the last part of the day, just like the Most High did on the days of creation. Therefore, Genesis chapter 1 is not contradicting the scriptures that clearly state that the day begins in the morning. Those who teach that the day begins in the evening have fallen for the Jewish deception. The time has come to repent. By this point, it should be perfectly clear that the day begins with the appearance of light every morning. Now I will examine some scriptures that are often used to suggest that the day begins in the evening. Nehemiah chapter 13, I will read verses 15 to 19. That's Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 15 to 19. Verse 15. In those days I saw in Judah men treading wine presses on the Sabbath and carrying sheaves and loading asses with both wine and grapes and figs and every kind of burden and bringing them into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Verse 16. And I testified in the day of their sale. Also there dwelt in it men bringing fish and selling every kind of merchandise to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Verse 17. And I strove with the free children of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing which ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Verse 18, did not your fathers us and our God brought upon them and upon us and upon this city all these evils? And do ye bring additional wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath? So the Israelites are not supposed to be buying and selling on the Sabbath. We're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. Yet that is what Nehemiah saw happening in Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. They were profaning the Sabbath. They were not keeping it holy. Verse 19, and it came to pass when the gates were set up in Jerusalem before the Sabbath that I spoke and they shut the gates. So verse 19 
is telling us about a time when they were gates set up in Jerusalem. They had been rebuilt after the Babylonian captivity. And Nehemiah saw that these people were profaning the Sabbath. So before the Sabbath, he spoke and told the people to shut the gates. It continues, and I gave orders that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. So they were closed before the Sabbath and they were not reopened until after the Sabbath. And I set some of my servants at the gates that none should bring in burdens on the Sabbath day. This passage is telling us the importance of keeping the Sabbath holy and that Nehemiah commanded that the gates be shut before the Sabbath day and not be reopened until after the Sabbath day so that no business could be done in Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Now I'm going to read verse 19 in the King James Version of the Bible because that is the version that has led people to believe that this is saying that the day begins at evening. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 19 in the KJV reads thus, And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut, and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants said, I at the gates, that there should be no burden brought in on the Sabbath day. So there are those who read began to be dark, and they say this is the evening, and the gates were shut, just before the Sabbath, which means that the Sabbath was in the evening just after it was dark. That's not correct. It is true that it begins to be dark in the evening. The evening is the last part of the day. Nehemiah commanded the people to close the gates of Jerusalem at evening time on the day before the Sabbath. On the sixth day at evening, the gates were closed so that when the seventh day came, the following morning, no one could bring burdens into Jerusalem on the seventh day because the gates were shut on the evening of the sixth day and the gates were not reopened until after the Sabbath. This passage does not tell us that a day begins in the evening. Leviticus chapter 23 is another passage that is often used to suggest that the day begins in the evening. Leviticus chapter 23 verses 26 to 32 reads thus, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, verse 27, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month is a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you, and ye shall humble your souls, and offer a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Verse 28. Ye shall do no work on this selfsame day. So this day is a Sabbath. For this is a day of atonement for you to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. Verse 29. Every soul that shall not be humbled in that day shall be cut off from among its people. Verse 30. And every soul which shall do work on that day, that soul shall be destroyed from among its people. Verse 31. Ye shall do no manner of work. Why? Because it's a Sabbath. It's a day of rest. It is a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your habitations. Perpetual means repeated. So this will happen every single year. Every year on the 10th day of the 7th month is a day of atonement. It's a day of rest. Verse 32. It shall be a holy Sabbath to you and ye shall humble your souls from the 9th day of of the month from evening to evening ye shall keep your sabbaths the israelites were commanded to rest or observe a sabbath from the evening of the ninth day of the seventh month 
to the evening of the tenth day of the seventh month. And this was to be done every single year throughout their generation. These Sabbaths were to be observed from evening to evening. However, this does not suggest that the day starts in the evening. It simply states that this particular Sabbath or rest starts in the evening. If the day started in the evening, it would have stated that we should rest on the ninth day. And that would have automatically covered evening to evening. Because the rest began on the ninth day at evening. There will be no need to mention a tenth day. The fact that there is mention of the tenth day demonstrates that this particular Sabbath started in the evening of day nine, continued to the morning of day ten, and ended in the evening of day ten. That's more than one day. It's the last part or evening of the ninth day and all of the tenth day. As such, this passage is not reason to believe that the day begins in the evening. Leviticus chapter 23 verses 5 to 6. Same chapter verses 5 to 6 is also used to claim that the day begins in the evening. It reads thus, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, between the evening times is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of this month is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. This is telling us when we should celebrate the Passover. It is not telling us when a day begins. The Passover is celebrated on the evening of the 14th day of the first month. The next morning, the beginning of day 15, is the start of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Leviticus 23 does not suggest that a day begins in the evening. Bearing in mind that the day is the period of light that is regulated by the sun and separate from the night, let us read Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11 to understand exactly when we should observe the weekly Sabbath. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11 reads thus, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day, there's no mention of night, to keep it holy. Verse 9. Six days thou shalt labor. We do not work at night, we work in the day. So day means day. Six days thou shalt labor from morning to evening and shalt perform all thy work from morning to evening. Remember Psalm 104 verse 23. Man goes out in the morning, he works until the evening. Verse 10. But on the seventh day, that's a period of light, that's regulated by the sun, and separate from the night, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. On it thou shalt do no work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy servant, nor thy maidservant, thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any cattle of thine, nor the stranger that sojourns with thee. Verse 11. For in six days, that's from morning, which is the first part of the day, to evening, which is the last part of the day, the Lord made the heaven and the earth. He did not make anything at night, and the sea and all things in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. The Sabbath day, like every other day, begins at first light 
and ends when the night begins. It is time for the children of Israel to wake up from the Jewish deception that the day begins in the evening. Evening is the last part of the day. Both the Hebrew scriptures and common sense consistently prove that the day begins at first light. And with that, I say, Shalom. And remember, if you find these teachings beneficial and would like to hear more, please like, share, and subscribe.